been said, John Waters. Uh, I work for a very small national charity called In Control. And In Control uh, set up uh, 2003, and we've worked to help local authorities and local people around some of the changes that have been happening in, in adult social care services that have come to be called personalisation and self-directed support. And some people may have been familiar with uh, the government's uh, strategy for putting people first. Uh, and we kind of did a lot of the early work around saying, well, how can we help change the way the system works? Uh, and at the heart of that shift was this idea that uh, people should have more choice and control over the services that they receive, that there should be uh, greater clarity over what those services are in terms of uh, people having control over uh, a personal budget, a budget that was theirs for them to spend and to control and to choose how they were supported. So that's in control. And I've come this morning just to set the scene, really, I think, for the day. Um, um, Wendy, where's Wendy? Uh, is she about? She's outside. Wendy, who's, who's helped with the organisation, uh, rang me up and said, John, uh, we're, we're having the event. Could you please talk about the uh, current picture in terms of financial position, the national picture in terms of finances? Uh, and being a helpful fellow, I kind of said to Wendy, yeah, absolutely, I'll, I'll try and do that. That's no problem. Uh, and then, having put the phone down, I paused and I thought, okay, um, what is the, the national financial position in terms of adult social care? Uh, and what would be useful to share? Because uh, one of the things that struck me was uh, this idea of choice and control, whether it's at an individual level or whether it's a local authority planning uh, how they organise a whole system or whether it's a, a government organising for the whole country, organising that system. There seems to be a marked lack of uh, clarity around what's going on. Whether that's in terms of uh, the support that people receive and the outcomes they get as a result of that, whether it's about the cost of those services or the cost of support. Uh, but I've done my best to, to try and share with you some information. Uh, and the importance of having that information really came home to me this morning. I, was, uh, I'm a lo uh, I live locally, um, although I tend to work uh, further away than this on, on most days. So it was kind of very close to me. I only came in from Horncastle. Uh, and on the way, <coughs> I had cause to stop off at Waitrose. Uh, I was standing just down the road. And the lady at the till uh, passed me in my change in the green counter. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, I think, what's, what's this for? Uh, so I said to her, what have you, what have you, I thought it was like a car park thing, I think, well, there's no barrier there. Um, she said, oh no, you put it in the, uh, charity, box. In the charity box at the, at the <coughs> exit, and uh, at the end of the month, or the end of the quarter, or whatever it was, Waitrose, look at who's voted for that charity, and they get the money they're going to give away. So I thought, oh, that's interesting, I get a say in, in the, the community work that the supermarket is doing. So I got to the exit, and there were th three containers. There was big, huge stack of green containers uh, that everybody voted for that was the children's hospice. And then there was a less substantial pile, but it was still pretty good, that was for the, I think it was the rugby swimming pool or something. Uh, and then there was a, about half a dozen little green tokens at the bottom there for the cricket club. And I thought, right, well, where's my token going? I've been, I've been offered a chance to uh, determine how the money goes and where it's spent and uh, for the community development. Uh, and that's kind of nice. But where does it go? And I thought, well, I really don't have very much information to go on. I know that the hospice does good work. And I know that these other two guys probably do some good work as well. But where does my green token go? And it dawned on me, well, I don't really have enough information. I know how much is being voted for. And I know broadly what these guys do because of their numbers, but that's it. So any thoughts on what I did? I left it on the top, and I thought, well, somebody else can make that decision. <laughs> <laughs> and then it struck me as I was going to the car, well, that's kind of what may be happening sometimes in terms of uh, 
when local authorities and local government and national government try and engage in discussion and dialogue around uh, how we should organise society and how we should answer the big questions uh, that challenge us today. So one of the things I'm going to try and do, and, and I'm by no means an expert in this area, uh, but it's just to kind of give you my take on some basic information to get you going. One, one of the things in my diggings about the position around uh, uh, adult social care and the funding position nationally is that it's complicated. I'll leave that one up. That, that, that one will do. Okay. It, the picture is massively complicated. Okay, So we have nationally 152 local authorities in England who are charged with uh, social services responsibilities, that's the one, okay? Um, that's, that's just a graphic, just to give you a sense of uh, how complicated things can be. Uh, this was, I pulled this out of the Guardian, uh, and it was their attempt to explain uh, how, as a country, we spend our, our money, okay? So you can see there's about 670 billion pounds, so a thousand billion uh, pounds, that every year, uh, the Treasury can spend on goods and services uh, and the departments. This doesn't include money that is brought in through local taxation. That does include the funding that uh, you pay through your council tax that goes towards providing some of the adult social care services. So there's a mixture there. Okay? But as you can see, uh, there's £670 billion pounds every year is spent by our government on our behalf. Okay, and once every five years, we kind of say whether we like how they're spending, uh, spending it or not. Adult social care, uh, again, it depends on how you count the, the figures, but there's probably about a million and a half people who have state-funded adult social care. Okay, out of a population in England of somewhere between 55 and 60 million people, there's about a million and a half. Uh, there's also about a million and a half people working that sector. Okay. Um, so it's a big, uh, it's a big industry. There's a million and a half people working in the sector, and that's growing massively uh, year on year. There's a million and a half people who get state-funded adult social care. On top of that, there are people who uh, fund their own care support. And there's a, that number grows. That million and a half grows substantially if you include people who fund their own social care. Um, the majority of the money from adult social care comes out of that health bar there, that 100 billion. Uh, and about 20 billion goes on adult social care, mainly through putting money into local authorities. Other money as well, the local government chunk there, uh, funding there from uh, what used to be called, what used to be supporting people. There's funding there that goes into local authorities. Uh, there's also, some people may get support from these guys as well money from uh, the Independent Living Fund that operates nationally, not locally. Uh, and that um, is through the DWP, so it's through another government department. And then, of course, all the benefits that get paid, again, come through the carers allowance and other, uh, other support services. Uh, that comes through the DWP. So there's no one single simple point in terms of national government that says, well, this is how much money we spend on supporting disabled and older people to be, well, let's not to get into why we spend that money is another question. Uh, but we don't, there's no real clear picture. But what we do know is it's a, a chunk of money. Uh, we do know that that chunk of money, there's pressures on it. Okay? Uh, and my best guess is are that it's about 20 million pounds, every, uh, 20 billion pounds every year uh, of, of state funded earth social care for a million and a half. If you look at how that's projected to change, uh, this is taken from the spending review. Okay, so at the beginning of this government, this, this, uh, this government produced the spending review uh, and it said we're not going to make the ongoing investment that the previous governments have made. Okay, so there was year on year on year, for the past 10 years, there have been uh, above inflation increases into a whole range of public services, and that's clearly stopped. Uh, health services, which is where the chunk of adult social care funding is coming from, is growing. 
And that top green line there is the projected spend for health from the spending review. The blue line above it is an assumed 5% inflation. So whilst it's growing, there's still a gap emerging there. Okay? Um, and then as you can see, the other, uh, other areas of spend just give you a feel for there's a slight decrease or a, uh, a static uh, projection in terms of how much money is going to be spent nationally. But the important thing to think about in terms of adult social care uh, is that green line, a lot of the spending there, the inflation is different than the rest of the economy. So drug spend, the inflation costs in terms of drugs, massively higher than RPR. So a lot of the pressures in terms of costs in, in, in the health budget that are calling on that green line are bigger. 